Talk CS. I'm Chives, Matthew Mugno, alongside my main man, Steve O. Feels good to actually be on the mic and ready to talk Rangers hockey. We talked about a lot with the opening last week. Now we're jumping right into Rangers hockey. Steve O, it's been a pretty big week for Chives here. Ready to jump right in? Jump right in. Boy, I could get used to this setup all season long. I'm excited. Um, so let's do it. Let's talk some puck. You mentioned the busy week. Mm-hmm. Jump right in. Let talk a talk. Maybe you can share what your experience to some of these listeners, what it's been like. I mean, it's been awesome. I mean, you're sitting over here telling me before the show. I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, training camp started last week. Obviously, um, they did. Laviolette had them do skates and then had them really – Fast pace, fast pace drills. Um, it's something that for the other reporters, it seemed like it was something that kind of shocked them compared to Gallant's style with the uh with the training camp. And then we had a preseason game uh last night, that was Tuesday. Um, and then there's gonna be another one against New Jersey. And I'll be at as many as those uh that's home or close by. I won't be at UBS on Friday, but the experience is great. I mean, uh you kind of try it's been kind of trial by I wouldn't say trial by fire, but baptism by fire, right? Like just kind of going right in. Um, I'm young, you know, you're with some of the uh, some great reporters and writers. And it's been a great experience to already learn a lot from Johnny. He's been amazing. Uh, Johnny Lazarus and from some of the other writers. My man, Andrew Gross, was at the uh, Ranger Islander game yesterday. Stefan Rossner, uh, he's another hockey news guy like me. So good. But uh, I'm ready to talk about, you know, what was going on at the camp. Awesome. All right. So let's do it. Let's jump right in. Let's talk before we jump about to the games. Let's talk about the camp. What are your main takeaways from actually being there and watching what's going on with these players on the ice? Yeah, so I think it's um, you know, I think for me personally, it was adjusting to to assessing the talent at that level quickly. Um, I'm used to Quinnipiac hockey and and college level. Um, that was the closest I'd been, aside from like my own playing days, or right. But that's a different, you know, that's like not not close to this level. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the first few days, I mean, LaViolette had said to in, in the press conferences, he's rotating the lines. You're not going to see a lot of the same lines. And a lot of what Steve and I want to talk about is what we think they'll be like, right? The predictions for the year. And that's always fun to banter about. But on the business side of things, that's not really how it's going to uh, go. But Wheeler was really well conditioned. They did, did skates to start. So like speed skated, like um almost like drills for conditioning, but before that, even just like the skate testing. So like how far their strides can take them. And Crider's, a, he's, he is, I know the meme is he's a meat market. Chris Crider is a, he is a meat market. Like he really is like, he's got like the stride of a horse. And then, uh yeah, I thought, you know, a lot of the players looked really good and, and ready for the season. You know, we talked a lot for near after he seemed pretty winded, but that's what you're going to get, right? Like these guys are well conditioned back in the day. Training camp was because these guys were ripping cigs and there was a beer guy in the locker room. Like there was, they were literally popping a Steve. What do you like? What are you a fan of? I like Heineken. All right. So yeah. Oh, so you're like an elite guy. Heineken. Yeah. Like that's no more. Right. So it was pretty cool to uh, see that, that they were getting worked. And apparently that wasn't what was going on with Gallant. Um, I, we got the chance to talk to a bunch of guys the first few days and, they're all ready to go. They they seem Vincent Trocek said, uh, you know, on the record um, that like, you know, it's a no BS year for us. And I think uh, he's one of those. He's a great personality and a great interview. And he had no problem saying that. Listen, same thing as us fans, what we've been saying, like this mm-hmm. is, no, is going to be a no BS year. This is going to be a defining moment in the franchise. And again, it's tough. You know, I'm not there at the camp, but again, I keep up. I've been watching. Oh, yeah. I'm watching the pressers. Um, and out of two games, I mean, we can jump into the games now. Yeah. Um, again, you can't really define a lot, you know, but still there's some key takeaways into the, into these games. And I, so far, I like what I've seen. And my biggest takeaway for me personally is the speed. Mm-hmm. The speed. And Lavi let said this when he's coming in, but we look great. We looked fast. Yeah. We look great. I love it. I think it's great. However, uh, we, you know, we played the Bruins once, and and we played the Islanders, and we were fast against Islanders. However, that was their first game. You have to remember, and they they looked a little sluggish, like, and that's what you expect. It's a preseason game, and I mean, but again, I still thought, I still think we looked great, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think something that uh, that's new with the Rangers. Uh, I think with Laviolette's playbook is. 
not foot speed, right? Like, I think the Rangers fans are used to Chris Crider and Filipino, like beeline, north, south to north. You know, you're moving it straight line, bubble hockey. And that is that don't that won't change. And I think for a Crider and a, a Hedl, like now they're under a number of coaches. Uh Staple, Arthur Staple wrote a piece the other day about Chris Crider, kind of explaining how his thought process was of his game and being under a, a bunch of different coaches coming into this season. And that was something that he talked about too, is it's not about foot speed, it's decision making. Uh, I wrote about it too. I, I wrote about how Capo Caco looked great um in that for in his first preseason game against the Islanders because he was making quicker decisions with the puck. Like you could see he was activating Offman and Trocheck. There were a lot more plays where he was in on the rush three on two, and his defensive de- game took a huge jump from his first year to second year under Dave Quinn. Gotta give Quinn a lot of credit on that. He went from like a minus 24 to like a a plus, like it was a single digit, but a plus rating. Um so yeah, I think like you're saying, speed. The Boston game looked like they had to shake off a little rust, and so did the Islanders. But the Islanders started a bunch of their starters, Mayfield, Aho, Nelson. You saw a few of them. You saw a prospect like William Dufour, who is highly toted coming in to this season. So, yeah, I mean, speed's, speed is the name of the game. And like you're saying, it's all about that decision-making. Exactly. And take a look at the Devils last year, the team that we got beat by. Mm-hmm. They were fantastic on speed, especially going back in, I remember, game four. Game three, especially, and at overtime, um, mm-hmm. game five, uh, the games that we lost, there were moments that we couldn't put together because of their speed. So going back, not to say, again, small sample size. Yeah. Not like it's addressed yet. But what I like, I like, do like what I'm seeing from, from speed because that is a big thing that's going to really going to have to kind of turn the page. And again, especially for these kids, Lafreniere, Cock. So yeah. you kind of got to see the speed elevated from their game, you know, and we still got some big question marks. Like one guy that I'm thinking, the bread man, how he's going to fit into there. But again, overall, I like what I saw. I really, again, you know, we're not being on predictions here, but yeah. I I want to throw a prediction out right now. I, I like what I saw from Blake Wheeler, and I think he's going to have a monster year. Yeah, I mean, especially from what I've seen so far in last night's game, mm-hmm. it's his speed and his size. Mm-hmm. I mean, for a guy that big to move as well as he did, and again, he, comparing him to you know the Islanders in the first preseason game, you know, it's not a big sample size, but again, I really think he's going to fit really well into this lineup. Yeah, I think what stood out to me was Wheeler was part of a group of like. The group A, the first day of those skating drills, they were doing like suicide type skates and they had them where they had to go down 40 seconds, come back and 30 seconds, go down. And they had to do that three times in a row. And that was one set. And they did each did that like three, four times. And his group was like Vincent Trocek. Um, I, I want to say like Kako, Adam Fox and Wheeler of those guys was he has the longer stride because of size. I'm not going to say this to pick out a dramatic revelation, but he was ahead of the pack and he was really well conditioned. I think that kind of surprised uh, myself. I know kinda, I was talking to Vince about it too, Mercagliano, like that kind of jumped out to him too. was just the fact that, you know, he, he looked pretty good, but you got to be if you're 37 years old, right? You got to be in good shape. And some that uh, actually happened the first game, t- uh, first practice to that skating was Truba actually went off and I, I thought he was going to face an injury, but um, you know, that's something you, you with Filipino and Panera and there's some small things, but I think it's because they're, they're pushing themselves a little bit early, but not, you know, it, it's calculated. You know, I, I truly believe that. I don't think these injuries, you know, injuries are going to happen and they're small things that you rather just rest it up. Now you don't need Phil Hedl going every game in the preseason yeah. anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And let's be honest, these games really don't mean anything. Yeah. Like, yes, they're, they're more they're more for, uh, I see this the way I see it is, they're more for the younger kids to get that experience, get that get that little taste. Mm-hmm. Like Hoffman. Exactly. You know, let's build them up. Let's give them that little taste. Let's, let's fuel, let's get him going. Let's get that dog going in him. But it's also, you know, for the veteran guys to kind of get back into this groove. And listen, if these guys can't go, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Like, 
that's what the first week, first two weeks is for. You know, the more games you play, the more you're going to get back into the groove. It's natural. These guys are professionals, so I'm not worried. Um, In terms of the injuries, I think I think Mika, Panera, and Hito, I think they'll all be fine. Yeah. I, I'm not... I'm not overly concerned about any of them. Um, I I think they're going to be cautious. I don't really think they're going to see Hedo or Panarin uh, play within the next few games. There's really no need to. Yeah. Um, these games really don't mean anything. So let's get them well rested up for the re- start of the regular season. I'm not concerned. I know a lot of the fans, a lot of the fans online were like holding their breath, but yeah. I don't think we're dealing with an Aaron Rodgers type injury. No, you know, it was funny. I think uh, Johnny was like, is this the MetLife uh, turf? <laughs> you know, are they practicing out there? Which is obviously, you know, for New York sports that resonates. But um, yeah, I think the fans too, to your point about last season, like I forgot looking at it, like I, I didn't realize they get shut out game five and shut out game seven uh, for nothing. So it's the same score. And within five nights, they're eliminated, right? And the playoffs are like four nights. Um, And in between that, like they pop off at MSJ. So it was a really weird end to the season. And I think it left fans wanting more. It left the players certainly wanting more. But I think from that fan perspective, like you're saying, like I think some of the reactions, especially with some of the smaller injuries, were like, oh, no, like something happened. But, you know, I think it's just because there's that pent up, you know, I I think people were – Maybe not expecting, you know, expecting more from the team, but also like excited too. And I think it kind of the, the plug got pulled. So a little bit of a long summer. And now we're back. I, I think the key though that we keep talking about is that pace. It's in practice. You had them, you know, they're stopping and they're going over stuff. And then all of a sudden, two laps around the rink. And then they're doing, you know, an offensive in zone drill. And they're, they're really, teaching them these fine details, but also allowing the players to be themselves. And that's the cool part, especially with a Kako. You want, you want to be dangerous because he can hold the puck. Fabio, let's say he could hold the puck for like 30, 40 seconds. And that makes him dangerous because he can kind of make something out of nothing. And you saw that on display, uh, obviously 15 seconds into that preseason match. But I, I, I have a lot of faith in, in Kako this season. Me too. Me too. I think he's going to have a good year. Um, it's, this is a tough question for you to answer because you weren't there mm-hmm. at the at Galant's practices. Mm-hmm. But the thing that I like from what I've heard and what I've seen in short clips is the structure of these practices and these drills that La Vela is having them do. I really think that this is what the kids need. Mm-hmm. We were just talking about this before we, we started rolling. These kids really aren't like kids anymore. Like, yeah. But in terms of... uh. I'll call it a sink or swim type year. Yeah. This is the mindset that Lave let's bring you. And so far I think it's worked. We're gonna find we're gonna figure out who's the real deal and who's not. Yeah. And when we bring these this style of play, this quickness, who can adjust to this quickness and who's gonna who's gonna drown? And I think this is key throughout this entire year. Um, and I'm gonna put everybody on there. Now, people like Kreider and Zabanachad, they'll they'll get the pass mm-hmm. um to an extent. But uh, um, Kako, Hedo, Laf. At this point, you got to put Panarin in there. Um, got to put everybody out there on the table. Fox will get a pass. Your, your core, defense. yeah. I think we'll be fine for the most part. Yeah. Um, Gustafson looks good, but so does Hollowell. Yeah, so I think the defense is gonna be fine. But um, in terms of the offense and especially top six, who is going to adjust to the style of play? Who's gonna sink and who's gonna swim? So I think that's what I'm most excited for. And I think that we might not necessarily get that answer early on in the year. I think the, yeah. I think the main thing is, is that it's building up is we're going to get a lot and a lot of playing around with these lines. I think yeah. the line that we see opening night is not going to be the line that you're going to expect that line every single night. So that's what I'm most curious about um, as a fan. So, um, Input on that? Yeah, I think like you're saying, I think the pressure's there and and I don't know if it's a sink or swim season um for those guys. I, I don't think it's like necessarily they sink. I just think at that point you kind of just accept what they are, right? In Lafreniere, Kako, Hedo. Like if they're not gonna break out now, I think a lot of fans are wondering, like, huh, when you know, is, is has that chip sale, then they're going to be a 50 point guy. And that's fine. Um, You know, e- either, obviously you're, it'd be great if they could pad the stats there, but I think something that 
is more important to the team this season isn't even just like your point totals. Those will increase, but it, it's that speed of the game because Lafreniere, Corey Pronman wrote about Lafreniere prior to the draft and explained like he's this like phenom, but it's not, you know, he he's not like a, he doesn't fit those characteristics of McDavid or Bedard, but he is a phenom and was a phenom with the juniors level. And I think it was because they were finding ways to activate him where he could kind of play off of those like vices. Like we know his skating and foot speed and, you know, it's not impeccable and or elite, but at the same time, he could make up for that. And that's how he was able to put up like 150 points in his final season with Romulski. So I think it's uh it, it's more about those quick decisions, like getting to the open ice, moving the puck and using your strengths to, to, you know, using what's your forte as a strength and, and something that you can still use within the system. And I think that's what I like to see the most. And that's what I've kind of enjoyed the most in the early practices and that the preseason match. Uh, so the two so far is like, you could see with Phil Heedle is like still Phil Heedle, but he's doing a little, he, he's playing within a system that's allowing him to do a little bit more. Yeah. I think, I mean, I'll speak for myself, but I think most of the Rangers fans have come to this conclusion too, is that, Paco and and majority of these guys, they're not gonna, they're not McDavid, mm-hmm. you know? and I think that's obviously clear. But again, like you said, making those smart decisions, getting a little bit better at that, I really think that's the next stepping stone when it comes to this piece. And I really think that not that he's gonna be playing with these, some of these guys, but having a guy like Blake Wheeler around, somebody who who we know is really good at making those decisions. I mean, that just helps and plays the strengths of this team, which I'm so excited for. I, I can't wait. I know I remember at the end of the season last year, I said Vinny Trocek was one of my number one majors. Mm. Um, I think Wheeler can kind of bring a, a performance similar to what we saw with Trocek last year, but kind of a little bit more uh, of that physical presence. Um, I, I think it would be great. Uh, I think – I'm calling it right now. I think that Wheeler's going to have a great game. Steve-O calling his shot. Now, actually, you know, speaking of that, I know this is something that just surfaced in kind of the Rangers sphere because uh, it was kind of shocking um, with Steven Stamkos in Tampa. He got a feeling that maybe he comes to New York. I'm, I'm spitballing. This is a really, not, you know, there's really not a lot to it besides the fact that it seems like from his quote and from you know, the management with Tampa, like the quotes that are coming out from both of them don't seem to line up on his future there. And I was curious, what what do you think? Would you like, you know, he's a right winger. He could kind of fill that hole for you. I mean, it's down the line. You never know how the season is going to go. But you never know. I think that's a stretch. Yeah. I think, I think he's going to, I think he could leave Tampa though. Listen, there's no doubt. This is an interesting conversation. I, I'm glad you brought this up. There's no doubt Tampa's on the decline. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at the stats. I mean, and look at the last season, the last season as a whole. I mean, it's just they're declining. They're aging as well. Yeah, I mean, they're not the same team that they were four years ago. I mm-hmm. mean, there's no question uh, to that point. But I, Steven Stamkos is, is is such a piece of that franchise. I don't know if they move. On. I just Tampa's always going to be in there. They're always going to be in the mix. Like I don't yeah. see Tampa falling off the rail that bad where they're not in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that to me, Tampa is always that one team that just lingers around. But for me, the biggest difference that I've seen from Tampa is that when the playoffs comes, Tampa is no longer like that team you don't want to play. And you saw last year in Toronto. Series. All right. So yeah. For me, they're going to be there. There's no question about it. But I don't think that they're like, who fears who fears Tampa anymore? You know what? I think, you know, you're on to something, Steve O, because I think that's part of the conversation. And I think this was a little more revealing to that fact. Like, I think when people realize, like, hey, maybe Stamkos might not be there in, you know, April, it's like, oh man, like maybe they're just not the same team. And to that, I looked up, like, if you look up Daily Face Off, great resource for like the line charts and everything. They got great writers or great website. Um Stamkos, like you look, it's like Stamkos, Point, Kucherov. Yeah, those guys are engines, right? But like 
now your depth is like a few guys that they kind of pulled up or and are in a good spot, but it's not the depth that they used to have. Um, at least on their cup winning rosters, and that's no knock. I mean, those were some super team like level teams, but now it's like Isamont. You got Tyler Mott. Um, you just got some depth guys that I love Tyler Mott. Right, like he was great in New York, uh, but. I just don't like, I feel like their depth is starting to fizzle out a little bit. Some of their guys are getting a little bit older. Like I didn't think Hedman had the best series against Tamp, uh, Toronto. Um, Stamkos is getting up there. I mean, he's leading them in like so many franchise things. So like you're saying, it just seemed a little discouraging. I think if you're from that, if you're looking at it from a, a Florida fans, right? If you live in Florida, you're a Tampa fan. You're looking at it from their perspective. It's like, oh man, like that was a little unsettling. Like our guy just you know, kind of came out and said, we're kind of not close to anything. And you saw that, you see that a lot with free agents where if that conversation starts now, it usually doesn't end well. I certainly, as a fan, I don't like Like Matt Kachuk. That was just like, he was gone. By the way, dog. Yeah, I know. Back to Stamkos though. I certainly, if I'm a fan of Tampa, I don't want any of my players saying something like that. Especially, yeah. Um, but I also think that the New York Rangers kind of did this last year. They kind of went out and got the star players last year. And I think they've kind of moved on from that. Yeah. Patrick Kane and Tarasenko, we all know how that turned out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of think that philosophy, and again, hurt us a little bit in terms of cap. I think that Drury's kind of moved on from that. Not that, not to say that we're not going to go out and get somebody at the deadline, which I think if we're going to be a playoff team, we 100% are probably have to go out there and add somebody. Yeah. But, um. There's a player that I'm thinking of for sure that I that I think is more within our range. But oh, baby. I, you know who it is. Do but I? Stamkos is, I think, wouldn't be the best thing. Since you brought it yeah. up. In, he's injury prone sometimes, right? Like, it's like, there's anyway. Be, since you brought it up, there's got to be a little bit of hope. I feel like deep down in you that we want Stamkos. I, what do you... Yeah, but I think you know what? It's kind of like the I f- I feel like we look at like the the David statue version of Patrick Kane and Tarasenko. Oh, what the Rangers got, especially in Patrick Kane. I think dealing with injury, yes, he he performed all right, but one goal game two, great, played well defensively. You know, the key word to me this season is the word extract. Like, Laviolette needs to extract the best out of those players and get them to do what he has them doing. Like, play with some pace, play with some jump, work hard. And the players respect that. But part of me, yeah, like, Stamkos on the power play, I'd be like, oh my gosh, line him up. Like, get him in there. You know, you you see the best in a player, but that's not always what you get. Like, what you see ain't always what you get. Exactly. I'm not gonna lie. I think about Stanko, so I kind of smile a little bit. Like, yeah, it's like, like I think two years ago in, in 20, 2022, in the in the Eastern Conference final, uh, um, in the Eastern Conference semifinal, he ate us up. Oh yeah, He's that guy. Yeah. So, yeah, of course. But again, I can't really feel like we can't really plan for that, and I can't really answer that question right now. Yeah, just a little amusing. What you know, if he goes out there and he, just, he blows. It's it's sometimes you put it mildly him. like that, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's not him; it's what they got. You mentioned their their depth is definitely dwindling. Yeah, like Brian Boyle said on Blue Crew Johnny's podcast, he was like, you know, with Marty St. Louis, like something that really sparked him. And and listen, this is a personal matter. Like I never talk about sports and personal matters like that. But you know what did kind of energize Marty was his mother's passing and that kind of united the team. Right. And that was when they were down three to one to Pittsburgh 14. I, you know, I, I don't know if you get that kind of a Cinderella run with stammer, like he's awesome, but I feel like it just kind of echoes the Eric Stahl, Patrick Kane type of it's dangerous. You're playing with fire with those guys. Cause Vlad was good. I thought Vlad was really good, but I think you're put you. I think you do play with fire a little bit. If you go out there and, and you try and attract another big fish. No, it's like striking out twice. Or yeah, that, and where do you put them? Like that now, it's like, all right, you're gonna shuffle Kako around again. Like, and my vision for this team right now is that we brought in a whole new style of play. You know, we're gonna try and reiterate and rebrand our team identity. Yeah. So I, I think I kind of want to focus on that before 
we'll get there. There's no doubt we'll get to that point of acquiring somebody. But I want to see what our style of, uh, style of play is, what our point is up to that point in the season, and then we'll de- we'll kind of develop what we need. You know, what's what's our weaknesses? What are we lacking? What kind of play would fit our system? What is our identity? Yeah. Well, those are all questions that I think that we need to address first. You know, and but it's probably – interesting. Not to, he might not come to the Rangers, but maybe they do move him and he goes elsewhere. Yeah, it would be – yeah, hopefully it's not like, you know, Jersey gets him on the cheap. We'd be – in trouble. <laughs> I'll talk about that. Yeah, I think uh, you know what, playing with pace. I don't know when this episode drops. I don't know if they'll have played against New Jersey or they probably will have played against Jersey tomorrow. That's Thursday's match, and then Friday at UBS against Islanders again. See how those go because you got some fights. Matt Rempe, I mean, he's huge. Took on Ross Johnston, heavyweight tilt. So we'll see if there's some feist to the game, a little bit of pace and a little more energy from the Islander side of things and. I think from that point on, they got another, you know, week or so preseason. So I'm taking things day by day. Before we wrap up here on episode two of our new season here. In these new games against coming up against you, do you have anything in particular that you would like to see from this team? I know this, we're not looking for crazy things, but is there anything that you want to see? It could be from a specific player. It could be overall as a team. Is there anything that you look for in playing? Yeah, I'd actually like to see, you know, this is a, a good thing that, you know, I, I think would kind of be good to work out is like when the team's down, how do they rally? Because you saw him jump out like all the players are looking great. The team play is great. Pip, like Kako, you know, Miller played well. Some of the AHL guys played really well. I was impressed. Othman looked really good. Like he might make the team. But I, I do think it'll be interesting. Like they down two nothing on Friday. How do they rally? Yeah, and I think this question might be answered by the time this pod drops, and I hope it is, because I do think that is very important. It's something that I think at the end of Gallant's tenure kind of fizzled out. So and there's no better time to experiment than, <laughs> than right now. Matter. Yeah. No matter. I agree with that. Um I want to continue the four check. I thought the four check was great. Mm-hmm. Um, especially last night. Um, so I want to continue that up. Um and again, I just want to get out healthy. Uh, that's that's the main True. thing I feel in the preseason. So Listen, knock on wood. Yeah, let's right get here. a little, let's get a full squad going for a puck drop of the regular season. I think that'll wrap us up here on episode two of season six of Puck Talk CS. Of course, follow us on our Instagram at Puck Talk CS. Follow our new website as well. I believe you can subscribe to it as well. So mm-hmm. drop your email into that. You'll get notifications of when every episode, article, any sort of emergency episode any sorts of like that drop so please subscribe and always remember it's just the luck of the puck